In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get the best results when custom painting your project. Let's get started. Hey everybody, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake, and if you're new here, we like exploring creative ways to use ordinary materials so you can complete your DIY projects easier and faster. We share customer builds, tips and tricks, inspiration, and all kinds of videos like that. So if you're interested in those types of things, definitely consider subscribing, we appreciate it. I spent the last few days testing 10 different methods for painting galvanized pipes. I tried everything from spray painting conduit without any prep work, all the way to prepping the pipes first with cleaning and sanding. I painted all 10 pipes and let them dry overnight, and then I did the same simple adhesion test on every pipe. The adhesion test consists of scratching a grid onto the painted surface, and then using a piece of duct tape to rip off and see if the paint comes off with the tape, or if it stays and it has good adhesion. To be fair, I did the same test on all 10 pipes, and honestly, I was surprised by some of the results. First off, I'll tell you the best results that I had. This black pipe was simply cleaned with a degreaser and then primered and spray painted. I'll be sure to link the exact degreaser, primer, and paint that I used down below. This was the only method out of all of the ones that I tried that didn't lose chunks of paint when I did the adhesion test. I even went back with the duct tape and tried to rip it off over and over again to see what would happen, and it still showed that it had the best adhesion. This is definitely the method that I would recommend if you're looking for the best way to paint EMT conduit or galvanized pipes. Now you might be thinking, Jake, that is still too much time and work. Is there not an easier way that I can get some decent results? Well, I'm glad you asked because this purple pipe had pretty good results, especially when you consider the method that I used to paint it. All I did was clean the pipe with a degreaser and then I used a two-in-one paint and primer to paint it. It surprisingly held up pretty well during the adhesion testing. If you're looking for a quick and easy method and you don't mind compromising just a little bit of quality, then this is the method I would recommend. If you've ever spray painted anything before, you know that you get some pretty bad overspray, especially when you're painting something like these pipes that need to be suspended in the air in order to cover the whole thing. A good alternative is hand painting. And I tested four different hand painting methods, including one where I degreased the pipe, scrubbed with white vinegar, sanded, hand primered, and hand painted. Actually, out of all 10 pipes, this one did the worst. When I did the adhesion test, pretty much the whole grid ripped off. However, if you like the hand painted finish or you just wanna avoid overspray, then the best method that I found for hand painting is to simply degrease the pipe and then use a brush to hand paint it. Just keep in mind that when hand painting, you might have to do multiple coats, which of course is time consuming. If you want to avoid painting altogether, then I'll finish up by recommending this heat shrink wrap. It offers great customization options and a lot of colors. It's really easy to put on the pipes with a heat gun and it's fairly inexpensive. You can find more about the shrink wrap from the video above and I'll also link it down below. If you have any questions or need any help at all with your project, you can leave a comment below or contact us through the form in the description. We're happy to help and we wanna make sure that you have everything you need to complete your project. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.